guys, welcome to the Music b and I'm 315 and this is the fourth episode of Listening to Unheard Artists. What we do is we listen to three unheard of artists and try to give them a bit of exposure. So if you do like one of the songs, make sure to add them to your playlists on Spotify, or Apple Music, wherever you listen and stream from and support independent artists. So before I start, I usually like to use Apple Music. One, I've got a subscription and two, they pay artists better than on Spotify. But as I go into my music library at the moment this is what i get it's been like this for about an hour so i thought i'm not going to waste any more time so i'm going to listen to the artist today on spotify so i am sorry about that but that's just how we're going to have to do it i know um i use a lot of spotify anyway i make a spotify playlist because i know a lot of you use spotify i'd recommend something else but there we go at least artists are still being paid So our first artist today is called Captain Veal, might be Captain Vile. Again, I apologise uh, for my pronunciation of some of these artists. Like I say, I have to hear them first before I say. Um, but we're going to be listening to a song called When Karma Bites. Nice 80s pads. Piano. <laughs> Sounds like someone chanting in a pub. Sound like you're on a night out, chanting away. Say the beat is it's so good. I like the ending then, you're a gorillas-esque kind of laugh at the end, like feel good. Um, the beat was uh, uh, pff, the beat was amazing, really good beat, uh, loved it. It was so upbeat, it was danceable, it was really nice. Um, the vocals, I was not expecting the vocals, it's, it kind of felt, I don't know what you're singing about, but it felt really sort of chanty, like something you'd be singing in the bar, it was really nice. And then when the... Um, the rap part kicks in. That was that was really good too. <laughs> Next up, we've got Turquoise and Twilight by C. H. Kelly. I love the album cover. It looks very Weezer-like. Even like your hair and your glasses, you look like you'd fit into Weezer really easily. And the lightning behind reminds me of Van Weezer, which is one of their more recent albums. Let's give it a spin. <laughs> from the album cover. Ooh. 
travels in your voice. Sound like a cross between uh, the singer from Guns N' Roses with someone else. Kind of penny. Say so this in between section, a bit long. Put it down. Quite interesting. I say your voice is a nice voice, very gravelly in tone, um, works well with the guitar. Um, coming from a producing background and uh, how we get listeners, there were parts of the song which I, I call ear candy. That bass, you heard, but that was really nice, you know. Um, everyone's heard acoustic guitars. And everyone's heard acoustic guitar chords for many years now. Um, thinking like Green Day, Time of Your Life, Oasis, Wonderwall. So many, we've all heard those chords to the point where we, when you hear an acoustic ballad, you kind of need something else with it. Um, so potentially, I don't know about your circumstances, but in terms of adding something to it, think about that ear candy when you're making your record. And also think about the listener's attention. There was a part after the first chorus, it was quite a long wait till the second chorus, and there was nothing there to hold my interest. It was just the guitar. Same with the intro. You needed something, whether it's some a strings, a pad on a keyboard, or even some percussion. Um, also consider your second verse should be a bit like your first verse, but a bit different. So consider like, instead of carrying on playing the guitar, stop and just have you singing the start of the second verse and then kick in you just need something that's going to recapture the listener's attention because if it's a constant stream of the same noise at the same level all the way throughout um you're going to lose their interest that was something i would hear in a bar in the background but i'd just be chatting to my mates while that was going on um and i don't think i'd be paying that much attention to it um it's nice background music in a bar for example but if you want to have something that's going to really grab the listener's attention, think about those extra things. Like there was another time after the second chorus, maybe a solo could have been added on top or something. Just something extra. It, I feel you've got a good voice. You've got some good songwriting techniques there. And the lyrics, you know, what you're writing about is lovely. Uh, 
you just need something else that's going to grab the listener's attention this day and age um we have very short attention spans and yeah it needs something those are my tips for you i'm sorry if it makes you feel a bit no i liked it like that kind of thing i don't like it when people review my music feel free to look at my music and tell me it's rubbish as well tell me what to add to it if anything i might add too many things too many elements going on in my songs but uh from a producing standpoint and from grabbing listeners attention and keeping it it's so hard to do and you need to add those extra things little twinkles the ear candy percussion things like that you were playing the guitar it's quite a hard upbeat song i imagine it was like a kind of thing uh, going on in the background maybe even in the second verse it just would have maybe brought it to life something new something interesting okay right let's go on to the next one so our next artist is called um gypsy chicken now i apologize uh for the name i'm don't know what the rules are on saying that word um i'm from the united kingdom and we tend to go with the word traveler um that's what i think at the moment so i apologize if that name does offend anyone at all i do apologize it's the name of the band i remember there was a band that used to be called eskimo callboy uh kind of a metal electronica band they had to change they changed their name recently um to electric callboy um just has to not offend people Right, the song we're going to listen to is called Midnight Sundance. It's the 12th song on their album called Nothing Noise. I have to say, another great um, album cover here, album artwork. I wish I could do art like that for mine. I tend to try and find something on the net or use AI artwork. Right, let's listen to Midnight Sundance. <laughs> Cushion, the claps. Yeah. It's alive. It's alive. I'm excited. I'm excited. Sunshine to solve all of my problems. Moonlight to bring them back. The legs run away to a faraway place where a midnight sun lands. Oh, I like that. Caught my attention. Variations no idea where all this is going but I'm all for it oh yeah back to this
trying to solve all of my problems Moonlight to bring back So let's run away to a faraway place Let's run away to a faraway place Where a midnight sun can dance Was it live? <laughs> that, that was great. There was so much going on. I didn't know where it was going, but I knew it was heading to a good place. There were so many elements. And I think... If you... I mean, I don't know. I think that might have been a live recording. I don't know. Uh, or at least a room where there were just a few people. Uh, but it's definitely one of those, like... You're in a bar. Uh, everyone's drinking. And it's easy to join in. As you saw when I was listening, I was clapping. I already knew how to sing that bit. It was it was great. Like that just gets people up. That gets people singing. Even if there's people who don't know your music, there you go. You've already got their attention. Um, amazing. We've had quite a folky show today. Um, but thank you for listening. Um, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you around. I guess. <laughs>